Hello, this is Dr. Salvatore Vincigera, and in this video, I'm going to be sharing with you a new research study that has to do with aerosols and what this means for teaching music here in Miami, Florida, and other places in the United States with the COVID-19 virus. Please enjoy this video. I would first like to disclaim that I'm not a medical doctor and I'm not a doctor of science. I am a doctor of musical arts and I am presenting this research in context of music education and how it relates to the COVID-19 virus that we are experiencing here, not only in the United States, but across the world and how that relates to teaching students in a music classroom and dealing with some of these issues that we might encounter either teaching chorus students or band students because of the nature of their instrument and how these instruments or even the voice produces aerosols when you are performing or singing or even talking. So let's first define what is an aerosol. An aerosol is a suspension of fine solid particles or liquid droplets in air or another gas. In the case of the studies that I'm using in this particular video, they're looking for the aerosols that are coming out of our bodies when we speak, when we sing, or play a musical instrument. This animation provides some insight for researchers to see how the particles are being thrown around the room. They're also studying the concentration of the particles as they're being emitted out of the mouth or out of the musical instrument. Researchers are also trying to discover if when a performer performs notes that are of a higher frequency or pitch, if there are more aerosols being admitted and if there are a larger concentration of those aerosols. And they're also trying to compare that to when a performer performs in their lower register or at a lower frequency, what is the comparison of those aerosols being admitted at those frequencies. I provided the links to the studies that I'm using in this video in the description box below. So you may want to check out and click on some of those links because I'm just showing you animation without the sounds in the actual videos of the people singing and playing the instruments, you're going to get a more realization of the context and nature of someone actually singing, speaking, or playing a musical instrument for this particular study. So some of the pictures and video that you've already been looking at in this video is from a German study. And I do not speak German. I do not read German. And the only thing that I'm doing with this particular picture and video from this study is analyzing it as a music teacher as to what they're doing in the video and how those aerosols are being sprayed. In this study, which was produced in March of 2020, you can see them actually demonstrate some of the choral techniques, speaking, and a little bit of coughing. It's just focused on singers. Uh, and for example, you can see them demonstrate a vocal exercise that we use in chorus class because I have my students say k, k, t, t, p, p, sh, as a vocal exercise to get them warmed up. So this is a very interesting study for chorus music educators and chorus students to understand what is happening when you sing and how the aerosols are being spread. So here's the most recent study that we have so far, and this was produced in July of 2020. And this is the Performing Arts Aerosol Study. It's preliminary, and it's done with clarinet, flute, horn, soprano singer, and trumpet. However, they've only provided video of the trombone playing and not the trumpet, but it is interesting to see the trombone because it is a bigger instrument and it does need more space as they're implying in order to really social distance that particular instrument so that the spread does not contaminate another person around it. And you'll see that later in the data that's being provided at the end of the video. So this is an excellent study for choral music educators and band music educators because it does provide them with some information on how aerosols are released through musical instruments or by a singer, and it does measure some concentrations of the particle sizes of the aerosols that are being released 
and uh, especially it's very interesting to look at the data with the higher notes that are being either sung or being played on an instrument and how that relates to the particle size of the aerosols and then also to look at how they're also measuring this um, with masks on and that gives us a more real-world experience for the implications of how we are supposed to implement um, the results of this study and future studies to the music education classroom. The next few videos are of the Schillerin test and the goal was to identify the flow pathways which would carry emitted particles. So the subject right here is reciting the alphabet and as she says each letter you can see how the particles are being emitted out of her mouth. In this video, the subject is singing the song to a musical, and if you were to add the audio recording to this video, it would put it more in context. But right here, you can see the intensity of her voice, and you can see what is coming out of her mouth, all the particles. And if you were to add the audio recording, you would be able to tell that between high or low notes, or how long she's sustaining a note, um, how much of the particles are emitted out of her mouth. Now this is what happens when you put a mask on and you can now see that if you look where her nose is that the particles are being emitted out of her mask but they're going upwards. Um, so this actually gives us some sort of indication as to what would happen in a chorus class if the students had to be singing with either a mask or putting something in front of their mouth. So in this particular video here, you can see that she's trying to put maybe her hand in front of her. Some people are trying to maybe put some sort of barrier like a book in front of their mouth so that the particles are being emitted upwards instead of straight out at people. This is the clarinet Schillerin test. And you can see on the left hand side the bell of the instrument and what's being emitted out of it. And then here you see the hands. It is an open hold instrument like a flute and some of the other woodwind instruments and what particles are being emitted out of it. They're also testing the different registers of the instrument going from low notes and then high notes and seeing if there's anything more being emitted from one register to the other. In this part of the video, they're going to be placing a bag over the bell of a clarinet. And as you saw before in the other video, without the mask, there is some emissions of aerosol coming out of the bell. Again, remember that a clarinet, a flute, and some other woodwind instruments are open hold. So they're going to be showing you the upper portion of the clarinet while the player is opening and closing those keys playing in different registers of the instrument to see what particles are coming out of the instrument in this particular area of the clarinet. And as you can see, there is a lot being emitted out of these open holes, even with a bag being placed over the instrument in this particular area while she's playing. In this part of the experiment, they're going to be placing a mask over a trombone. And it is kind of similar to if there was a trumpet or any kind of other brass instrument. As you can see that the trombone does need a lot more room just because of that slide there going up and down, but you can see the emissions coming out of that particular bell of the instrument. That's what the mask looks like, and now they're going to be using it and experimenting, well, if this was just a shield or maybe a piece of cardboard in front of the bell, what is the difference? And you can see the different particles um, coming out of the bell as the instrumentalist is playing the instrument with different tones. So this chart shows the total concentration over time for the trumpet. The trumpet is the highest pitch brass instrument that we have. And if you look at the left hand side of this chart, you can see that big spike there where the trumpet is playing in its higher register and the concentration of the particles is very high and you can see that in comparison to sitting and doing nothing compared to the mask covering the bell and so forth. And uh, it is something very interesting to bring out of this because when a brass player or when a musician does sing in the higher register, 
that that means that there's a higher concentration of aerosol particles coming out and you know that could mean that that plume is going to also be bigger and uh, could cause some problems. Here is the same chart but it's for soprano singing and you can see from left to right that the scales and the warm-up are kind of low but then when you get to a church choir piece and there's maybe one note that is in there that is a higher note that it is a higher concentration pop singing that particular style maybe requires more air different types of notes different um, maybe accentuation of particular notes and so forth and then at the end of that on the right hand side of the screen you can see singing with a mask and how the actual concentration goes lower and pantyhose screen and just sitting there and breathing. Here is the same chart for the clarinet. When you look at the left hand side of the screen you can see that the scales are near the bell and then you see scales near the keys and there's an arrow there. This is sharing with you the differences between what is being emitted out of the bell and then what is coming out of those keys. So what is coming out of the bell is actually a larger aerosol emission than what is coming out of the keys. Here's some remarks by the researchers in that they're saying that the concentrations of the emissions were relatively higher for instruments that had straight shapes from mouthpiece to bell, which include the clarinet and the trumpet. Masks, nylon bell coverings all reduced particle concentrations. So that goes in line with how we're social distancing and wearing masks just around the community in that if we were to place masks on our instruments that those face coverings or you know to the instrument or to the actual singer do reduce the particle concentrations. That's why we're wearing them. The researchers did look at two case studies in regards to the emissions for outdoors and indoors and that's because they wanted to just see these are the typical rehearsal halls that a musician would be rehearsing in or maybe outdoors with a marching band just to see what the differences of the concentration would be in these two different areas. So here are some remarks of the findings of these case studies and it is that they confirm the effectiveness of social distancing in keeping six feet apart from an infected person and that they indicate that the risk of infection can begin to rise especially with an exposure duration greater than 30 minutes. Here are some general considerations by the researchers. Masks should be worn by all students and staff prior to entering the performing arts room. Masks should continue to be worn until all students are seated and ready for instruction. Example, long rest, sectional work, moving around the room, etc. No talking should occur in the room without a mask being properly worn. When possible, a mask with a small slit for mouthpiece access should be worn while playing. In instrument groups where a mask cannot physically be worn, the mask should be worn over the chin and replaced during periods where the student is not playing. No talking without a mask. Social distancing should occur as suggested by the CDC. Currently, that distance is a 6 by 6 foot space around each student with the student sitting in the center. This may reduce the number of students that can fit in a performing arts classroom. Straight lines should be used as curved setups can affect the aerosol movement in a room. Trombones should have an additional three feet of social distancing, making their space nine by six. The player should be seated three feet in front of the back line, leaving an additional six feet in front of them due to the extended nature of the instrument and slide that can be in an extended position. Spit valves and other water coming from the musical instruments should not be emptied on the floor. It is recommended to use a puppy pad or similar type of pad to catch the contents of the spit valve and then discard the pad. Storage areas should be managed to limit the number of students at a time in the room. Anyone who enters the room should bring a 70% alcohol wipe to wipe all the surfaces before and after touching. The wipe should be discarded properly upon leaving the storage area. Teachers should consider using a portable amplifier to keep their voices at a low conversational volume. 
Students should also ask questions in a low conversational volume with a mask. Teachers are assumed to talk the most and as a result should wear the most efficient mask possible that is readily available, which are surgical masks. Other general considerations have to do with the HVAC systems that should be fitted with HEPA filters. The air purifiers on the market are to provide additional filtration and um, they will increase the air change exchange rate from the standard HVAC systems. So this is very important to keep that airflow going so that those aerosols do not become concentrated and just stagnant in the room. This study does recommend using outdoor open-sided tents and this is because the indoor spaces are sometimes very poorly ventilated and the space is not adequate for students and uh, the aerosols that are spraying around there with the higher concentrations due to the nature of playing a musical instrument or singing. There's a link for marching band directors where they can go to to get guidance for the return to marching band and it's provided by the NFHS. Additionally, the research says that bell coverings are highly recommended as masks for the instruments. Bell covers can be made of multi-layered high denier nylon material and provide a barrier for aerosols. Outdoor rehearsals are considered best practice. Indoor rehearsals using CDC guidelines plus bell covers may be considered. This is Dr. Salvatore Vinciguerra. Thank you for watching this video. I hope that more research studies are going to be presented on aerosols and also how we're going to navigate this new way of teaching music with the COVID-19 virus. I encourage you to write uh, comments or questions in the comment section. I'll try to answer that the best I can. Please remember, I'm not a medical doctor. I'm a doctor of musical arts, and I'm just informing my viewers and the music education world, my students, parents, and teachers uh, that are in this field and maybe not in this field about what is happening uh, with COVID-19 and why uh, it is such a hazard to teach some of these classes at this particular time. But with precautions, you know, uh, you can get away with teaching some of these courses. But remember, we all have to be safe. And uh, this is a very trying time for your teachers and students, especially when they have not even got out of phase one in certain areas of the country of the United States of America. So please everyone stay safe. This is Dr. Salvatore Vinciguerra. If you like this video, please like it, subscribe to this channel, and have a great day. Thank you.